Leban Khalis. Allah says in the Quran, Min baini farthin wa damin leban and khalisa. From between farth, which is filth, and blood, which is nejis, comes pure milk. It's something extraordinary in this ayah because one, I mean, there's a scientific miracle uh, that was pointed out by Maurice Bukayil and others, but there's another important ishara here, and that is the nature of the mukhlis is that he is constantly surrounded by people who are not pure. They're impure. And in order to maintain his ikhlas and his sincerity to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he has to be vigilant. He has to guard himself. He has to maintain the purity of that milk. And the purity of the milk is guarded by not exposing it. Right? This is what we do to maintain purity of milk. We cover it. Right? And this is why you have to veil your actions. You have to hide. You have, Sidi Muhammad Sharif once sent me a letter and he said, make your actions in secret better than your actions in, in open, in public. And this is, this is the secret of ikhlas. You have to be true with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when you are alone, more so than you're in the public. And even though uh, it's a tradition that the, the ulama don't like, uh, there, was a, there was a group of, uh, of ghulat, they were extremists, but they called them the malamatiya. These were people that used to publicly do displays of dishonor in order for people to have a bad opinion of them. And uh, Sidi Muhammad Sharif and I were in Morocco once and we came out of a rest of a coffee house after Fajr. We'd, we'd gone, we prayed and went to this place and we were on our way to the airport and we came out and there was a man sitting there begging and I was about to give him something and then we, we saw next to him was a bottle of alcohol. And, and, and I, I was about to give him something, Muhammad Sharif said, don't give him anything, he'll just buy something, he'll buy more alcohol. And then I said, Subhanallah. You know, I was thinking, yeah, you're right. And then, and then the man, he looked down at the bottle and he looked at us and he said, A'udhu billahi min shaitan rajim And then he looked up and he said, Allah fawq al jami' Allah is above everything. And then Muhammad Shri said, Astaghfirullah, I didn't see him drink. I just saw the bottle next to him and I made an assumption that was not correct to my Muslim brother. And that is having a good opinion of the slaves of Allah. But there, there used to be that tradition. I mean, it's, it's not an acceptable tradition. The ulama condemn it because you should honor your, yourself. But the point is, people went to an extreme, really, to be sincere with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's a bid'ah and it's not acceptable, but it expresses only a sentiment or a point that these people were very, they were serious about being sincere with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so protecting that, between all the filth of the world, guarding that milk, that pure milk, that sa'igan the sharibin, it's, it's easy to drink, it's sweet. And that's why the mu'min, when, 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 people, uh, when people mix with the mu'min, they love the mu'min, because the mu'min is sweet. The Prophet said, al-mu'minu hayyinu layyinu. He's gentle, he's sweet, his nature is good. The Prophet said, some people were rude to him. The desert Arabs were rude to him, and he never returned their rudeness with rudeness. He smiled in their faces. He returned their bad manners with good character. And this is what he taught us to do with people. And, and we have to, it's mujahada, we have to struggle. The, 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 the sabr is in sadmatul ula, patience. When, when the, the woman who was in the graveyard and, and, and she was we, mourning over and the Messenger of Allah passed by her and he, and he said that uh, this is a musibah and you should be patient. And she said, you didn't have the tribulation that I had. That's how she answered him. And he just left her. Now look at the character there. He didn't say, don't you know who I am? I'm the messenger of Allah. You can't talk to me like that. He didn't say that. He saw she was mus she musab. She was in tribulation. He left her to be in her tribulation. He gave her nasiha and she didn't accept it, but he recognized her psychological state. She was in a state that it was not useful or beneficial to continue with her, and so he left her. I, this is wisdom. This is hikmah. And then he went to his house and somebody came by and he, and, and he said, don't you know who that was? That was the messenger of Allah. Suddenly remorse entered her heart. Astaghfirullah. And she went to his house and knocked on the door. Ya Rasulullah, I didn't know it was you. And the messenger of Allah said, patience is in the first calamity, when the first thing hits. That's when, in other words, it, when the calamity hits, 
patience that Allah wants is at that point. That's the point Allah does not want you to lose control. That's the point to take. It's not when it's all over you say, oh, please forgive me. I didn't mean to punch you after you said that to me. You know, I'm sorry. No, it's to, to stop. I'm not going to punch him. Right? I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to engage. I'm not. And that is mujahada. That is learning to suppress the nafs for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because we're here for Allah. We're not here for, and this is ikhlas. To do it for Allah's sake. Really, to do this for Allah's sake. To forgive your brother for Allah's sake. To forgive your sister for Allah's sake. Not for them. To do it for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Really. There's people in here that haven't talked to their brother or their sister. Or some of them to their mothers and their fathers. Don't be that person. Don't cut off your bloodship bonds. Don't be that person. Do it for the sake of Allah. And a man came to the Messenger of Allah. He said, Ya Rasulullah, Asilu akhi wa yaqta'uni, u'atihi wa yamna'uni, uwasiluhu wa la yuwasiluhu. I give him, he withholds. I come to him, he cuts me off. What should I do? He said, that is Sirat al-Rahm. That what you're doing is the right thing and continue to do it even though he's cutting you off. That's Islam. That's Islam. And it's hard. Don't think this is an easy religion. We want to be people that make mujahada. We want to be people that honor ourselves because Allah has honored us when he said, لَقَدْ كَرَّمْنَا بَنِي آدَمْ We have ennobled Bani Adam. We have made you great people. We gave you a heart. We gave you intellect. We gave you the ability to overcome the worst aspects of yourself. And even if, if t from time to time you capitulate, we've given you the means to renew and to restore the self through tawbah. What a gift from Allah. So this is what we have to do. Ikhlas. The opposite of ikhlas, as everybody knows, is riya. And like Attar has a story of a man praying, Allahu Akbar, and then somebody hears the mosque door open and he says, I'm, I, I'll pray longer so they'll think I'm a really good person. And then he, he goes long prayer, long sajda. And then when he finished, he looked to see who it is. And it was a dog that slipped into the masjid. <laughs> right? <laughs> right? Or like the man who was, he was praying and somebody said to another person, SubhanAllah, that man, he prays so much, it's, it's unbelievable. And then the man said, don't forget to tell him about my fasting, right? <laughs> you know? There's people like that. It's hard, seriously, there are people like that. And when that comes to your heart, because it's the nature of being human, right? Really, from the time we're children, we love praise. Children do the most wondrous things to get the attention of the parent to get the attention of, of somebody who they feel has jah, they have a position. And, and we all want that. It's something that we have to fight that in ourselves. We have to fight it and oppose it and say, and I'll give you the cure for it. If everybody wants this, Sidi Ahmed Zarruq, according to the hadith, three times a day, in the morning and the evening, Allahumma inni a'udhu bika an ushrika bika wa ana a'lamu wa astaghfiruka mimma la a'lamu. That's it. Do that three times in the morning and three times in the evening. And do it in sajda and do it after your prayers. Do it before your prayers. Do it when you feel that happening. Allahumma inni a'udhu bika an ushrika bika wa ana a'lamu. Oh Allah, I seek refuge in you that I should associate with you with knowledge. Wa a'udhu bika mimma la a'lamu. And I, seek, and, and I seek refuge in you from what I don't know. Because riya is very subtle. Like one of the Salaf, and this is from Bab Hasanat al Abrar, Sayyat al Muqarrabin. The good actions of righteous people are bad actions of the people in the Divine Presence. <laughs> one man used to pray every day in the first line. 20 years he did that, and then one day he went and he missed the Takbirat al Ihram and was in the last prayer and he felt ashamed that people would see him. So he decided not to go into the prayer. And what he said he realized from that is that he'd been praying 20 years with Riyah in his heart. And he actually made up all of the previous prayers. So that's a subtle, that's subtle Riyah, the, the, the hidden. And the Prophet said the shirk of his ummah sallallahu alayhi wa is like the movement of an ant on a smooth rock on a black night. 
So ikhlas has to be done, and that's the cure for it. Now, the warning about it is this. In the hadith in Sahih Muslim, according to the hadith, أَوَّلُ nas يُقْضَى فِيهِ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ رَجُلٌ أُسْتُشْهِدَ The first people that are judged on the day of the, a man who's martyred. He's brought before Allah, and Allah shows him his blessings, and then he says, what did you do with all the blessings I gave you? The man says, I fought for your sake. Allah says, you're a liar. You fought to be called a brave man, and you were called a brave man. And then he's taken to the hellfire. And then the same is true of a scholar who learned knowledge to be called a scholar. And that was his reward, because that's why he did it. al-amal. The reward is according to the action. If, if the action was to be called a scholar, then you got your reward in the dunya. You know, and I, and I wallahi, that's why I have to say, I'm, I'm not a scholar. And when I hear people say that, it, it scares me. Because one, it's not true. And two, uh, because if that's in my heart, then, I, then I'm in big trouble with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, to... To study so that, and Imam Madik said, even Imam al Jazuli said something that when I read it, it frightened me to death. He said, from Riya is when you read some strange thing in a book and you remember it to tell other people in a majlis. I mean, that's, that's getting very subtle. And when I, when I said that to one of my sheikhs from Mauritania, he said, there might be some mubalagha in that. You know, but the point is, these people were very serious about protecting their hearts from riyah. And the Prophet said, once he came to a group of Sahaba and they were making mention of something, he said, what are you talking about? They, they said the Dajjal. And he said, can I tell you what frightens me more for my ummah than the Dajjal himself? And they said, what? And he said, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that they work for other than the sake of Allah. And we have a whole nation of people studying for pieces of paper. Wallahi, they're studying for pieces of paper. It's not knowledge, you can't tell me it's knowledge because I have the piece of paper. <laughs> so nobody can tell me it's knowledge because I went to the school and I sat in the classes and, and, and did that thing and regret every, every minute of it. Right? It's not knowledge. You know, it's really, it's not, it's a lie. Now I won't say that there are things like uh, medicine and engineering and that have benefits in them. But the vast majority of what they're teaching is just absolute uh, nonsense. It's just nonsense. Psychology. Don't tell me getting, I'm getting a degree in psychology. Right? Oh. Psychology in the Arabic language is ilm nafs And if you think these people know anything about the nafs, <laughs> just try reading some of their self-help books. Seriously. I mean, we've got Muslims reading uh, Stephen Covey. I mean, the reason I did that talk, I did a talk called Seven Habits of Muslims, was because all these Muslims I was hearing, oh, did you read Covey's book and this and that? Subhanallah. You're taking your deen from a Mormon? <laughs> really, you're taking your deen? Because it's deen, it's about mu'amala. That book's all about how you know, to, to be in the world. That's where you're taking your sunnah. And you say, no, but it's just like Islam. Well, then take it from Islam. Don't take it from him. Don't tell me, oh, it's just like Islam or he got it all from Islam. Why don't you go to the source that he went to if he got it all from Islam? Seriously, it's a madness. We've gone mad collectively. This is an ummah that is, has, has a collective madness right now. Wallahi, it's collective madness. So that, that's the reason. Now, 